Well, when I was in high school, I made a living making sandwiches. And at Subway, let me tell you, we saw some funny characters in there every single day. And one guy in particular stands out in my mind because he would limp into Subway using a cane to walk. He was kind of a disheveled looking man. Um, he wore the same flannel shirt everywhere he went. But whenever he would come in, he would always stop and ask me how my day was going right off the bat. And I would respond, and in turn, I would ask him how he was doing. Uh, but before I could even get out the, how are you, uh, he would almost shout, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm too blessed to be stressed, I'm just blessed. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm a little too stressed to be blessed rather than the other. Uh, I have been spending time working on this sermon, and as you know, our appointment Jesus was due today, so I'm like up here worried that I'm going to be talking about Elijah during the Sermon on the Mount. <laughs> Uh, you know, I had to teach this morning in my discipleship class. I had a, 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 a um, commentary due in New Testament on Tuesday. So I'm a little too stressed to be blessed. And maybe you can say the same thing here this afternoon. But as we talk about blessed people, another friend comes to mind. And uh, when I think of blessed people, I think of her because she's been through so much during her short time on earth, yet she values in her soul all the blessings God has given her. She's had many medical complications, but when you speak to her, all you walk away thinking is, wow, she is so positive. All she can talk about are her blessings. She is too blessed to be stressed. And you know, in Matthew chapter 5, Jesus preaches his Sermon on the Mount, and he shows us what kind of people can expect blessings to come their way. Let's read together in Matthew chapter 5, if you would. We're going to begin reading in verse 1. Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 12. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountain. And after he sat down, his disciples came to him. He opened his mouth and began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the gentle, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who have been persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you and falsely say all kind of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward in heaven is great. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. I want us here today to really see the heart of Jesus and really experience what he is trying to teach his disciples in this passage. Did you hear his words? Jesus lists all of these problems that his followers are facing, those who are poor in spirit and discouraged, those who are weeping and mourning, those who are doing all the right things. They're gentle, they're merciful, they're hungering for righteousness, they're making peace wherever they go, yet they are not seeing material results. What would Jesus have to say to the downtrodden and to those who do good yet are growing weary? I think the first thing Jesus would try to teach us is how to love our problems. How to love our problems. You're probably thinking I'm crazy right now because really, who loves their problems? Probably none of us. But instead of resisting our problems, I think Jesus wants us to embrace them. In Matthew chapter 5, Jesus gives us all of these circumstances of things that don't seem much like blessings. Yet the word he pairs with them is blessed. Blessed are the gentle, blessed are the peacemakers, blessed are the pure in heart. Another way to translate this is happy is the one. Happy is the one who is poor in spirit. Happy is the one who mourns. Happy are the merciful. You may be thinking, well, how can a mourning person be blessed? Or how can one be happy who is poor in spirit? Well, I don't think Jesus was so arrogant to imply that people in these circumstances had no problems or no worries. But I do think he was saying, hey, in the midst of life's drama, in the midst of life's difficulties, in the midst of all the stuff that life throws at us, you can be happy. You can choose to be blessed. You might be thinking, well, Stephanie, how can I choose to be blessed? 
I've got a mortgage I'm barely paying, or I'm going to be paying on my school loans until I'm 60, or I'm barely hanging on to my job, or I'm running on three hours of sleep, or I put my dog to sleep last week, or my father has cancer, or my wife is thinking about divorcing me. How can I be blessed in the middle of these things? How can I be happy in this stuff? Excuse me, Stephanie, if I don't find the silver lining in my life right now. I would say to you, friend, Jesus wasn't belittling these problems when he was talking to his disciples, and he doesn't belittle your problems now. He is merely giving you a choice, a choice to look beyond the problem and see the blessing that awaits you, a choice to begin loving your problems, a choice to be too blessed to be stressed. This isn't simply an optimistic outlook. This isn't simply a can-do spirit. This is a choice. A choice that the Son of God is offering to those who are downtrodden. He is imploring you, beloved, come see your problem from a kingdom perspective. Blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you and falsely say all kind of evil against you because of me. Blessed are you. Have faith in me. Have faith that I will help you see the joy in this situation. I can't promise that I'll make everything better or I'll take away all your problems, but I can help you see the joy, the blessing in your situation. Remember the people I mentioned at the beginning of the sermon? The man in Subway had no doubt many problems in his life. He wasn't a wealthy man. He obviously had some health problems, but he chose to be blessed. It might have been a very hard thing for him to do at first. I imagine that's why he went around consciously making the decision to say, I'm too blessed to be stressed. He chose to find God's blessings in his life. Remember the girl I told you about? Her body is racked with pain on a daily basis. Uh, It's hard for her to go about her daily routines, but she chooses blessing over pity. She chooses to be blessed, and she chooses to tell others about her blessings. Jesus wasn't just imploring us to love our problems. He is also offering a solid, unbelievable promise on the other side of our blessings. As I mentioned earlier, Jesus is not going to simply take away all of our problems or eliminate all of our pain. That isn't how God works. This is how God works. He offers us hope in the hardest struggles and deepest wounds of this life. This is how God will bless us, by offering us hope. Did you notice what came after the blessings of the Beatitudes? Jesus proclaims on all these blessings on all these different people in different circumstances, and then he shines the light of hope on the situation. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the gentle, for they shall inherit the earth. The word for here in the Beatitudes acts as a bridge between the blessing and the promised hope. You will be blessed because you have this hope. Well, what is the hope? In every beatitude, Jesus speaks of future promises. The word shall is repeated over and over again to speak of promises that shall come to pass. The thing that Jesus is trying to instill in his disciples is the hope that will come in future days. Why is Jesus repeatedly using the phrase shall? You shall be satisfied. You shall receive mercy. You shall see God. Because, friends, as the songwriter said best, there is coming a day when no heartache shall come, no more clouds in the sky, no more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. What a day, glorious day that will be. There will be no sorrow there, no more burdens to bear, no more sickness or pain, no more parting over there. And forever I will be with the one who died for me. What a day, glorious day that will be. You see, when we are too stressed to be blessed, Jesus points us to heaven. He was pointing us to the kingdom. How can I bear the pain that life brings? How can I fight on when the storms of life rage around me? How can I love my problems? Jesus was saying, child, think on heavenly things. Point your eyes to heaven. Because in heaven, we shall be comforted. Because in heaven, we shall be satisfied. Because in heaven, we shall receive mercy. And because in heaven, we shall see God. 
This is where our hope comes from. This is how we go on. We begin to love our problems and see them as a blessing. And we see the hope that Jesus has prepared for us in heaven. The last thing I think Jesus would say to us here today is, have faith in me because you are not alone. In verse 12, Jesus tells the disciples that the prophets before them were being persecuted just as they will be. Jesus was telling them that in their suffering, they were not alone. And he says the same thing to us. A lot of times when we are in the midst of suffering, we feel so alone, like no one in the world understands what we're going through. Satan tells us that we're the only one dealing with our problems. He tells us we're worse off than everyone else, that no one can possibly relate to us, and he makes us feel alone. But Jesus is saying, have faith, look to me. I suffered in every way you have. I've been there, you're not alone. Have faith in me. Jesus told the disciples, in the same way you are being persecuted, the prophets were persecuted before you. Jesus tells you and I, in the same way you are suffering, I suffered before you. Hebrews 4.15 says, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses. That means Jesus knows what we're going through. He knows our struggles, our hurts, our insecurities, our failures, our fears, our sufferings. And he implores us to have faith in him. To have faith that one day every wrong will be made right and every right will be rewarded. You know, in our line of work, what we are all studying to become, there will be many challenges that we face. I think right now of my brother who moved from Middletown, Ohio to Seattle, Washington, all because he believed God was calling him to be the pastor of a church plant there. On any given day, he can feel discouraged, beaten down, wondering if his answer to God's call on his life was worth it. He pours his heart and soul into the ministry and church there, and many times it seems his efforts are in vain. There is little reward he sees for his efforts, and yet he still presses on every single day to live out God's calling on his life. What would Jesus say to him? Blessed are the enduring preachers of the gospel, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. I think of another pastor who is in the middle stages of life, he has given 30 plus years to ministry. He pastors a dying congregation. Week in and week out, he is faithful. He is faithful to God. He is faithful as pastor and shepherd of his church. And yet he still gets discouraged over the lack of growth and faithfulness of the congregation. What would Jesus say to him? Blessed are the faithful shepherds, for they shall see God. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward in heaven is great. I think of the two characters I mentioned at the beginning of the sermon, the man in Subway who wore ratty clothes everywhere he went, who limped everywhere with a cane. What would Jesus say to him? Blessed are those who hunger and thirst literally, for they shall be satisfied. I think of my friend who has suffered many years with medical complications, whose body has been put through the ringer. What would Jesus say to her? Blessed are those who are persecuted in sickness, for their reward in heaven is great. And I think of you here today. You labor and work your fingers to the bone over sermons, exegesis, Greek assignments, and for what? Sometimes it feels as there is no light at the end of the tunnel, and like we're working for nothing. Maybe you're like me and you're too stressed to be blessed. What would Jesus say to us today? Blessed are the faithful laborers, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So what do we do with what we've heard today? The question now turns to you. Are you too stressed to be blessed? What is particular to you and your life that is oppressing you, bringing you heartache, destroying your joy? What is robbing you of your blessings? Is it countless assignments? a health condition, a problem with your coworker, finances that are grieving you, whatever it is, hear the words of Jesus. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the gentle, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. 
Blessed are you when people persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, Tyler. Rejoice and be glad, Becca. Rejoice and be glad, Zach. Rejoice and be glad, Tim and Dr. Brewer, for your reward in heaven is great. 